Welcome to week two of our life group series through the book of Nehemiah, Rebuild. It is never too late for a new beginning. I want to welcome all of you, whether you're watching here at the church with your group or in the home or perhaps online with others through your group. I want to just welcome you to be a part of our study here tonight. I want to thank our life group leaders for leading these discussions. And for those of you that are just getting plugged into a life group first or second week, Please keep at it. This is going to be a real source of encouragement for you in your life in the days ahead as you move forward. So thank you for being a part of it here at Gateway. Uh, this fall, on our Sunday morning series and on our Wednesday and Tuesday, whatever night, life groups, we're going through the book of Nehemiah. Uh, this book in the Hebrew Old Testament that really gives us a part of the history of the nation as they're finding their way back into the land. Remember, they are facing exile. They have been taken to foreign lands, 722 B.C. in the north by the hands of the Assyrians, and in 586 by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. Now the international power play has shifted, so much so that Persia is the key individual and nation, nations excuse me, in charge. And we see here in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, remember we talked about how they're to be read together, that God rose up, uh, rose up three different leaders, Zerubbabel, Ezra and Nehemiah, to help lead the rebuilding efforts. The first for that of the temple, the second for that of the people, as they read God's word and God's law, and here for Nehemiah as he went back to help rebuild the walls. Last week we talked about the idea that Nehemiah saw the condition or heard the condition of the walls, and with this honest assessment and with great empathy, he humbly goes before God, praying, seeking, asking for his help. And that's where we pick up today. It's a wonderful section of scripture in Nehemiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5 through 11, where we see Nehemiah on his knees before God, asking for God to intervene. Have you ever been in a situation like that, where the rebuilding effort is so great that unless God steps in, it can never happen? Many of us have issues and challenges and relationships that need to be reconciled and healed. And on the surface, we think to ourselves, it's never going to happen. That person's too bitter. Or I feel like I'm too right to acquiesce anything. Here in those moments, we're reminded of our need to seek God. That with God, nothing's impossible. No relationship is ever too far gone. No pile of rubble is beyond God's ability to rebuild in our lives. And so I want to read that whole section of Scripture for you. I hope you'll follow along with me in your Bibles. Uh, bring your Bibles each week to your life groups. Uh, that's where our text is going to be found. In Nehemiah, I want to start in verse 4 where we see, I mourned for a number of days, fasting and praying before the God of heaven. Uh, we see here this idea of for a number of days, fasting and praying, that this was not just some one-off thing that Nehemiah did in his life. He is seeking God out. We'll find out at the beginning of chapter 2 that it's four months later when he finally goes before Artaxerxes, the Persian king, and asks for his help. Think of that. For four months, he's seeking out God. And this is the content and the outline of the prayer he prayed those many, many months. He says, Lord, the God of heaven, the great awe-inspiring God who keeps his gracious covenant, and with those who love him and keep his commands. Let your eyes be open and your ears be attentive to hear that your servant's prayer that I now pray to you day and night. For your servants, the Israelites, I confess the sins I have committed against you. Both I and my father's family have sinned. We have acted corruptly toward you and have not kept the commands, statutes, and ordinances you gave your servant Moses. Please remember what you commanded your servant Moses, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. But if you return to me and faithfully observe my commands, even though you are exiles who are banished to the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place where I chose to have your, my name dwell. They are your servants and your people. You redeem them by your great power and strong hand. Please, Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to that of your servants who delight to revere your name. Give your servant success today and grant him compassion in the presence of this man. At the time, I was the king's cupbearer. 
What a prayer. What a prayer on the lips of Nehemiah that he brought before God through mourning and weeping for months and months. I want you to just observe two uh, 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 key elements of this prayer. Two key elements of his prayer before God that I believe should model our prayers when we want God to do a rebuild in our lives as well. Uh, The title for our message on Sunday is that it starts with me. That the rebuilding efforts in whatever situation God calls us to begins in our own life and in our own heart. And that's the first observation in this text. You, You see that Nehemiah takes personal responsibility. Now, when you first read that and hear it, you think, how can that be? Nehemiah is in Susa. Remember that winter kind of capital or location for the Persian king. They are many, many, many miles away in Jerusalem. The walls have been broken. Nehemiah was not there in 586 BC when the Babylonians came and ransacked the city. He was not there when Nebuchadnezzar brought them away into captivity. He was not part of the nation at that time that had sinned so egregiously. And yet, we see in the text here the personal responsibility that he takes. First of all, he calls himself your servant. And the people, he calls them your servants as well. That he is identifying with the people of God, as the part of the nation of Israel, God set apart chosen people. And in the text, notice what he says in verse 6 and in other places. I pray to you day and night for your servants. I confess the sins we have committed against you. Both I and my fa- father's family have sinned. We have acted corruptly towards you. And have not kept the commands and statutes and ordinances you gave to your servant Moses. Do you see the personal responsibility here? Here's the situation. He's recognizing the nation is going through this time of great sadness. And he's reminding himself that if I'm part of the nation of God, the, 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 the people of Israel, that I too should be obedient to Moses. And he uses three words to describe the Mosaic law. That I too must be obedient to the law and to the commands and following after the Lord. But if I'm honest, I too have fallen. If I'm honest, I too have not 100% been faithful. If I'm honest, I know that I too have fallen in sin. That even though I may not be physically in the land and be the one that is experiencing the pain of seeing the gates burn down at that time, being part of God's people, I have fallen. He's talking right as a person in ancient Israel They had the Mosaic law. It was something that they were to follow. It was something that they were to be obedient to in response to God's grace. It set them apart as a community. It was a covenant that they were to keep with God and that God, through his great gracious mercy, allowed them to remain in the land when they obeyed. Part of the reason why they were placed into exile was their desire to follow other gods and not be obedient to God's command. And and here, Nehemiah is saying, I too know that I have fallen. I too know that I'm not perfect, but I too, like the people of Israel, have this promise that we see from Moses in, 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 in the, in the, in, from the Pentateuch, that, that if my people repent, that they can be brought back to the land, that there's hope of restoration, that though they were banished, I will gather them and bring them back to dwell. These texts of scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 4 and chapter 28. So, personal responsibility. God, the rebuild starts with me. That Lord, I can see all the brokenness around me. And yeah, Lord, I could point my finger for Nehemiah to that nation that's feeling the the difficulty in the land thousands of miles away. Or Lord, I could look into my own heart and recognize that I need to start here. You know, God may be calling you to some kind of rebuild effort that is way beyond your ability to see. But you know what? In the midst of it, God wants to rebuild your life. God wants to rebuild your values. God wants to draw you closer to him in the midst of it. That even if we do not see the things rebuilt that we so long for, that God could still do a work in our life. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God may have brought you you to a challenging situation right now in order to really get attention of your heart, to get the attention of your soul, to get the attention of your spirit so that it could change you? Nehemiah recognized that. Don't miss the rebuild effort that starts in your life that you have the control over being obedient to 
when we see overwhelming challenges around us. Okay, closing here today. We want to get into our discussion. We'll talk about more of what that looks like. How do we do that inward introspection uh, that isn't morbid or condemning of oneself, but is honest in order that we could respond. But lastly, I, I just want to look at the last verse as we see a second element of this prayer. He says, at the time, I was the king's cupbearer. I love it. We talked about it briefly in the past. In the ancient Near Eastern world, the cupbearer would have a prominent position in regards to the king. He would be the one that in many situations was seen as a wise sage right by his side. An individual that oftentimes was a eunuch in charge of the king's harem. An individual that was trusted in many, many ways. Also a taste tester in some settings where anything that could be brought to the king in order to poison him would first be tested by this cupbearer. In other words, this is an individual that would have access to power, be trusted, and be relied upon by the leader in charge. And Nehemiah here is saying, I was the king's cupbearer. He has a burden for what God's doing and what God is trying to rebuild in Israel. And he's recognizing his role And what we're going to see here is out of this position and role, God calls Nehemiah to step outside of his comfort zone in order to be used by God. And God wants us to do the same. Take personal responsibility. See how God wants to rebuild our heart. And get ready to step outside our comfort zone. It would have been much easier for Nehemiah just to stay back in Susa and in Persia, to have access to the king, to live a life of comfort as he served this new foreign leader. But God called him to move beyond that. And I believe in our lives we're going to see the same. That God calls us to move outside of our comfort zones in order to be a part of the rebuilding work in the lives of other people. That it is hard, sometimes often messy work, to be an instrument in the hands of God to see individuals come to know Jesus and follow him together. But that just as God does that work in our life, he calls us to do so in the life of others to have perhaps those conversations that are outside of our comfort zone. Perhaps God may be even calling us to leave a career or move somewhere else in order to step outside of our comfort zone, in order to be a witness for him, to invest in the lives of others around us. How might God be calling you to step outside of the comfort that you are in, in order to be used by him to rebuild the lives of others? We look ultimately to the example of Jesus, as we do in all of Scripture. That Jesus came and humbled himself. That he did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped. But that he took on the form of a servant. That God himself came to live and die and rise for us outside of the comfort zone in order to bring the rebuild that we need for eternity. Well, God bless you. I hope you get to... uh, Discuss these words and these ideas and these questions now in your time with your small groups. Uh, Encourage each other that God's doing a great work inside of us. Personal responsibility. And he calls us to step out of our comfort zones by faith. God bless you. We'll see you soon.